Hello and welcome to the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company podcast, episode something. <laughs> um, my name is Emma and this is a podcast about knitting and um, hello everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. It's been five months apparently since my last podcast so I have quite a few things to share and quite a bit to talk about. So I'm going to dive straight in and then I'll update you with some other stuff at the end. Um, live stuff um, if there's time. So I'll start with the finished objects. Um, this is the short uh, mini um, by Albina McLaughlin. This is one that I've shared on here before actually but um, on a vlog not actually on the podcast. So it's a toddler size sweater and it has this really cute little boot kind of sealer collar detail on the back. This was a really interesting knit. It's actually knitted in my yarn as well. Um, this sample was knit in my Causeway yarn and um, my natural sock, but you could of course use um, all natural sock if you wanted to. So I used a mini skein set for the colour work. And this is my first all over colour work garment. And it's also, this is my third steeped project. Yep, it's steeped, which is super fun. Don't be scared of steaking, it's really fun. <laughs> Makes things faster as well. So I thoroughly enjoyed this knit. It was really interesting. It was knit bottom up which um, I also like. Um, I did, what type of cast on? Just a generic stretchy cast on. And that is not a tubular cast off. Not sure what type of cast off I did, but I'm really, really proud of this um, piece. And I would, I should knit one for myself. Wouldn't it be so cute? So finished object number one. Um, what else can I say about this? So the only other thing I can say was the sleeves were knit cuff up and then you kitchenered or graft it around here. And the bit picking up for the collar was really satisfying, I have to say, because it's picked up diagonally, if you can see that. And um, also picking this up was the most difficult bit, picking up these stitches here. But overall not difficult and very, very highly addictive because every time you did like half of a repeat you'd think oh let's just go to the end of that and so on and so forth and before you knew it you were actually finished which is crazy. So that is one finished object, very proud of that one and yes maybe I'll knit one for myself someday soon. Next finished object it's actually um, crocheted. I am not a big crocheter at all. I can only do like granny stripes. It's been a very long time since I've even done a granny square. And a friend suggested that I try the V stitch in crochet. It was quick and easy and it had a lovely effect. So this is gonna be a gift for someone, for a little baby. And I used a lot of leftovers. I just tried to pick colours that I felt went nicely together. I didn't have a specific rhythm for choosing the colours, but I just picked what I thought looked good. Um, it's a very wide blanket. I always make these blankets kind of wide so they can be folded in half and put on a car seat. Um, like this, and then tucked into the car seat. So yeah, this took... I think I started and finished this, I think, within a month, which is very good, very good for me indeed. I can actually tell you because I have my little knitting book here. I keep my swatches in here as well. And I'll tell you more about them soon. Now, let me see. March, I finished my, oh, the first sweater. I'll have to show you that too. Yeah, so I finished this short mini in April and I finished the baby blanket in May, maybe, June. 
Yes, I started the baby blanket in June and finished it actually in the same month. Which, no, I finished it in July. <laughs> I finished it in this month, which is uh, pretty amazing for me. Um, yep, so this, I've not really got much more to say about this. I'll tell you a bit about the different yarns. There's some of my own yarns, my limited edition yarns. There's some Jameson Smith, there's some Roots and Rain. There's some Marina Skia and yeah, looks amazing, doesn't it? So that is that finished object. <coughs> I'm guessing if I'm going correctly by my notes, I also didn't show you my drop sweater. And um, this is by Albina McLaughlin, another pattern by Albina. And it's knitted in two strands of Nutridin. Don't always wear it with it rolled up like this. It looks a wee bit silly, but, um, you know, this is like wearing a sleeping bag. It's amazing. And it's going to be even more amazing this winter. So it is um, called Drop, D-R-O-P-P, -P, sweater. Oh, I have it on the wrong way around. <laughs> um, it's got a split hem here. And it is a drop shoulder construction which was quite fun. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this knit. It was quite addictive as well, but if I was knitting it again, I would slightly change how, where the shoulder ends. I maybe would have ended it a little bit sooner. Um, I was given the yarn by a friend and um, you hear the rain on, maybe you can't hear that. Um, this yarn was interesting to knit with. I there was there were challenges. Let's just say there were challenges. So first of all, the first problem was I was knitting with it straight off the plate and it just kept ripping all the time. It was so annoying and I am actually a very very loose knitter. So in effect, I don't really tension my yarn anyway. So I was told to um, wind it into balls. So then I had to wind it into balls. That was a big job, which I didn't love. I felt like it was eating into my knitting time a little bit. <laughs> um, and then also, cause I was holding two strands together, there was, uh, there was always, you know, it quite often happened. They got kind of jumbled up and then it ripped again or like, a ball would fall out and it would just, yeah, because they weren't in kecks, it wasn't as streamlined. Um, and then actually knitting with it was fine. The problem I had was when I made a mistake and I tried to rip out, it did not go well at all. That was very difficult. So for example, when I seen that this was getting too big, I was just like, I tried to rip it out and I was like, you know what? it's not worth it like this is mentally not good for me to try and do this so I just continue knitting and that's why it's so oversized there's 40 centimeters of positive ease um the one good thing actually about this yarn is you get a lot of meterage I'm not exactly sure how much but I seem to still have loads loads of it left it does create a very nice light and airy fabric a bit similar to Let Lope, I would say, but maybe a wee bit more, slightly softer maybe, but I hear people saying that the Nutridin has different levels of softness depending on which colorway you get and if it's undyed or dyed or whatever, whatever type of blend it is. Um, so what else was I saying about the yarn? Yes, the challenges. Um, and then also I noticed now, I don't know if I just, it was kind of really hard to weave in the ends in this. Some people would probably say you don't need to, but I definitely found an end that was unraveling here. I don't really know what to do about it at this point. I had to spin a, what I was basically desperate to do, a tubular bind off here. And you cannot do it with unspun yarn, it's impossible. So I had to take some and spin it on my spinning wheel just to do this tubular cast off because I decided I was, I really, really needed it here because you would really, really see it here. So I did that and um, I could have done it for the cuffs, but I just thought, 
I'm not sure if it'll be worth it for me. So yeah, I wear this a lot. Um, it has pulled a wee bit, but I just expect that with real wool. So no big deal. I just do a little de-pill every so often. No problems there. So next finish object. And yeah, I would knit another one of these again, 100%, maybe not in knitted in yarn, maybe in a different yarn, um, possibly. Um, it hasn't put me off using it maybe in one more project, but I don't think it's gonna be, I'm not like obsessed. Like a lot of people are totally obsessed with knitted in. I'm sorry to say, but I'm not one of those people. Lovely yarn, but I, I just, the mental energy it took me just to get to the point of knitting with it, I just thought, no, I, d I don't think it's for me, unfortunately. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't try it. You should try it and form your own opinion of it. I'm guessing I didn't show this either. I finished this back in February or March. I think my last podcast was probably January, February. This is the first sweater by Hive Knits. This actually languished quite a while before I finished it because I had some problems with the sleeves. Um, this is either fisherman's rib or half fisherman's rib. I think it's fisherman's rib on the sleeves. So it's got this really cool balloon effect on the sleeves. And it's a raglan construction, just a regular hem and a folded neckband, which is beautiful. So let's talk about this. The yarn used was my, one of my limited editions. Let me just check. It, it was in my Hebridean and Black Welsh Mountain limited edition yarn. And um, I initially was using the mill ends to knit this, um, which is like, skeins that are maybe smaller than 100 grams or like you know I was using up all those stuff to knit this in that's what I always do call me a frugal knitter I don't know and <laughs> um, maybe I'm not a frugal knitter but <laughs> anyway I was using this up and it's got a really nice texture this yarn it kind of looks black but it's actually kind of brown as well and it has these little light gray flecks if you can kind of see, that's maybe not the best. It's probably quite difficult to see with this, but I've had quite a few compliments of people saying that this color of black slash brown slash charcoal really suits my skin tone, which is interesting. Um, Cause it's completely natural undyed. And, um, and yeah, so right, let's talk about knitting this. So. I started this last summer and I finished it in, did I say March? Yeah, I finished it in March. So probably like three quarters of a year it took me to do this. It wouldn't have taken me that long. It is four ply weight. So that makes it slower. Of course, the short and mini is also four ply weight, but it seemed really fast. So some people have trouble knitting with the dark yarn, but I don't because I have a little Ikea lamp that has direct light. So I always put that on no matter what color of yarn I'm knitting with if I'm inside and the room that I knit in normally is quite dark. So I always put that on, but so I don't have any problems with knitting with dark yarn. So let's talk about these sleeves cause that's the bit that really challenged me with this. And it did say in the pattern, watch out because it grows. So, the the sat the original hive nets designed the sweater in it was a worsted spun yarn and this is woolen spun all my limited editions are woolen spun so i did do a gauge swatch and it seemed good so i knitted the whole thing um got to the sleeves followed the instructions and um, was making sure they were short enough so they wouldn't grow did all that and um, I think I had the cuffs knitted and everything and I was about to cast it off, do the tubular cast off and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna maybe block it and see how it looks. So I did a steam block 
I didn't cast off the cuffs, I did a steam block. Um, tried it on and thought, no, no, this is too short. Um, and by this stage I knew I didn't have enough yarn to finish it. <laughs> so I had to do a little call out on Instagram. Will someone sell me my own yarn back to me so that I can finish this? How ridiculous is that? So um, a lovely person um, offered to sell back my skein of my yarn back to me that they had purchased off me that they didn't have any direct plans for. So that was amazing. So I got this gain back in the post. <laughs> Just sounds so ridiculous saying it, but yeah. And then I knitted about, oh, I don't know, like three inches more, maybe. Maybe that was too long. Yeah, maybe around three inches or something. And then I think I knit the cuffs again, or maybe I didn't knit the cuffs a second time. Anyway, tried it on and I was like, this is too long. So I had to rip them out again. Got it to somewhere in between, knitted the cuffs again. <laughs> and then I think I did another steam block. And then I did the tubular bind off. So all in all, it was quite like, it was quite fast apart from just the sleeves. I probably could have had it done last year if um, I'd have, because of the problems with the sleeves, I kept leaving it to the side. And then it had to be a while before I felt I could come back to it because I don't know about you, but sometimes if there's problems in a project, I just like to leave it and it has to be a certain amount of time before I can come back and rip it out because you feel like your work's just gone to waste, kind of, for all those hours you spent knitting a part of a sleeve that you had to rip out. Even though I know that's part of the creative process, I think that's how your brain works sometimes. So this is my final finished object. Um, next, I have a nearly finished object. This little project in this cute little French basket that I got in France, if you've watched my vlog, um, is another project by Albina McLaughlin. Yes, I'm a big fan. Yes, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going through a bit of a phase at the moment. Oh, I think I just pulled my stitches off the needle, whoops. Um, and it is a strappy crossover vest top. It's crossover at the back, but you can also cross it over at the front. I'll probably cross it at the back. And I am knitting it in, whoa, sublim subliminal colour choices here. That's funny, isn't it? And um, my heart sock yarn um, in the Sprout colourway, which is actually in stock right now, believe it or not. And it's a 330 metres per 100 grams. So it's kind of a heavier weight four ply. So it's kind of close to sport weight, so you can kind of use it for sport weight or four ply weight, which is cool. And I started this project, oh, all my stitches are intact. I started this project, let me see, um, back in, actually I didn't start it very long ago. I think I might have started it in June. Yes, I started it in June. Um, and I'm almost finished it. It's quite a fast project. Um, I haven't tried it on in a little while. I could do with trying it on again soon. Just take this out. So I've never knitted any sort of summer knit before at all. It's usually not my thing at all because it just rains constantly here in the summer. Like. Right now, at the last count, I think it's been raining probably for a month, every day. Um, so generally, summer knits are not my thing, um, which is why I'm using my hearth sock, which is 50% Jacob and 50% um, BFL. Did I get that wrong there? It's really embarrassing when you don't know your own yarn. <laughs> Um, anyway, 
So, yeah, because I thought in the winter I could wear like a long sleeve top below this um, as well to make it more versatile. So this is kind of what it looks like, I guess. There's not that much to see, but it's gonna be, I'm gonna wear it with high waisted stuff, I think. And then this strap crosses over and attaches on here. And then this strap crosses over and attaches on here at the back. And um, it's just a really neat little pattern. It doesn't take up much yarn. It's four ply weight. And you can also knit it in different weights, I think. Um, and the one detail I really liked about this that I thought was really cool was the way the straps just come out of the ribbon at the top. It just like seamlessly disappears up. I just thought that was really nicely well done. It's a little um, progress keeper from Chat with View Crafts. It's a little hot cross bun. How cute is that? So I expect to be finished this maybe by the end of next week. I've only got maybe a few inches left to do on one of the straps. So um, I am very much looking forward to that. Um, I'm actually, I've picked up the DPNs for this. I find it easier. I'll show you in one of my next projects, one of my works in progress. Um, I just find it easier sometimes with DPNs than a big cable of a, you know, like an interchangeable needle. I have to show you this other little thing as well. I got this last couple of summers ago, I think, or maybe it was a one autumn, a little tape measure. It's got centimetres on one side and inches on the other, so very, very handy. And it's got, um, it's actually antique. I got it in an antique shop. Well, it's probably not antique if it's got um, centimetres on it, but it's probably from, I don't know, 60s maybe. It's got someone's initial on it, EB. Not quite my initials, but I thought it was nice. And it's got this really pretty little um, detail here on it. Um, so yeah, my Trust new top will be done very soon. Next up, I have a little project in a very special basket all the way from Cameroon that my sister-in-law brought me back. She actually lives in Cameroon. Oops. And this yarn, I need to tell you about this yarn as well, and the pattern. Um, the pattern is by Petite Knit. It's called the Stockholm Hat, I think. Um, and the yarn is Marina Skew's Mendip 4 Ply. Hope I got that right. The colourway is... Let me check. <laughs> Hmm, I'm not sure, but I will put it down below. So the yarn re required for this project is actually a DK weight plus a strand of mohair. But whenever I swatched, I was so far off gauge, it was unbelievable. So I had to go down to four ply and take my needle down I think one, at least one, maybe one and a half sizes to reach gauge. How crazy is that? It looks small, but it's really, really stretchy because it's ribbon. Um, now, the yarn, I can't, oh wait, the thing's in here. I'm so stupid. Um, look, ah! <laughs> Marina Skew, Mend It Four Ply, and it's wool and spun as well, and it's called, the colour is Ower, and then in brackets it says Sunny. And um, it's 180 metres per 50 grams, so that is uh, 360 metres, so um, yeah, four ply weight, obviously. And, um, and the the sheep that provide the wool from the, for this yarn live on an eco farm um, on the Mendip Hills, which is very lovely. I think Marina drew this sheep herself as well. Just put that bag in there because you never know when you'll need these things. 
So my idea with this hat was um, to knit one for myself and then also to knit one for my little girl that's kind of matching. And I had bought the four ply to knit hers in because I thought, well, if I'm basically doing like DK, like a, f a thicker DK weight, I can knit hers in four ply and it'll fit her. But now I see that I have to use the four ply, it's no way it's going to fit her. Although, you know, interestingly, whenever I measured my head, it was 56 centimetres around. And whenever I measured hers, it was 46, which to me doesn't seem like that big of a difference. I suppose because of the ribbon as well, it's quite forgiven. So I'll just do some calculations and make it fit her. I don't think it'll be that difficult. This is a project I definitely, definitely want to have finished by September because last winter she just, she just had a really um, thin wool and silk bonnet. Um, but this year I want to get a really nice warm, cozy hat for her. Next work in progress is a pre pre knit I'm doing for Albina and it is also my first Marl project. So I'm awaiting instructions for the next um, piece of this but um, this is what it looks like at the moment and I think the idea is that it's going to have like a little V shape collar and I guess long sleeved. This is what the fabric looks like up close. It's um, my natural sock base. And I actually knit quite a lot of things in my, my sock bases. I have a lot of sock bases, but they're good for garments as well. And I'm holding these two colors together. The green is Mojito Fizz and the pink is Candy Floss. And I'm holding them together to make this cool moral effect. I would, um, I, I can't knit any more of this until I get more instructions, so I don't know when it'll be finished, but I guess it'll be ready for the autumn. So that's a really nice thing I'm working on, and I would like to do a few more moral projects. It's really fun to see how the colour works up, because I think depending on what yarn is held in front, and you can't really control it, it just kind of happens, and um, it creates this really cool effect. And I believe I started that last month or the month before, I think. I think it was May. Yeah, I started it in May. So hopefully it'll be finished by the autumn. Next work in progress is um, a sweater that I started to work on a couple of months ago for a wedding I was going to. I think I started around April-ish. Um, but I never continued it <laughs> for several reasons. This is the project here. Um, such a beautiful color in my opinion. It is naturally dyed by woolen flower. Um, who's a natural dyer up in Scotland and uh, I think this was dyed with madder um, and it's a mohair silk base and I've said this lots of times I don't try not to kind of use mohair silk but for this particular project I thought it would be the most suitable yarn and um, because it's to wear over a spaghetti strap dress to a wedding so I wanted it to feel kind of um more fancy and to get that kind of sheer effect I don't really know what else you would use so I'm basically this is a self-drafted sweater at the moment there's um I couldn't find a pattern that I was looking for or anything close to it so I am using this is a lace weight yarn but I'm using it at a DK weight gauge to get that nice airy feel to it can't remember how many stitches I cast on, but basically I measured my body. I knitted a swatch, I measured my body, and then I calculated it. So basically I was gonna do like a roll hem here at the bottom, or possibly an I-cord, applied I-cord um, around all the edges, I'm not sure yet. Um, I didn't want it to, to be too oversized and huge. I just wanted it to fit my body with a few centimeters of positive ease. And I think I had decided in the end to do a raglan 
um, decrease. I actually have never done that, but I don't think it would be that difficult. I think I could figure it out. It's just the opposite of doing like a top down, you're just decreasing instead of increasing. So I hope I can figure that out actually. Um, and then I'll maybe just do, would be cool if it was maybe, I actually don't think a V-neck would work. Ideally what I would do, although I don't know how to do it, would be like a square neck, like that, with an applied eye cord um, edge and around it. And then I think for the sleeves, I would maybe do like three quarter length sleeves. Um, I've only got two skeins, so I'm not, precious about how long the sleeves are as long as I can finish it. This is not an, a width that I'm actively working on. However, I'm going to another wedding in October. Doesn't this color and this color go really well together? <sighs> Sorry, off topic. And I would like to have it to wear for then. So it's something I'm gonna be picking up probably next month to work on and try and figure out a little bit. Um, but yeah, designing and self-drafting patterns is not my strong point as many of you know but I'm going to give it a go and uh, I'm sure I can make it work. Send me your tips below um, and I've got one final work in progress and it is in this cute little basket that I found in the charity shop and it's the Sophie scarf by Petite Knit and I'm actually, here's the needle, I'm actually testing out a yarn that might be coming to my shop, possibly next year. Not going to give away any details about it yet, but basically, um, I'll show you what it looks like. It's a four ply weight, I'll tell you that. I'll explain in a minute what all these clips are about. <laughs> um, but I'm holding it double because this is a DK weight pattern. And I dyed it myself. So I'm almost, I'd say I'm probably about a third of the way by this project. This is probably my 10th time attempting to knit a Sophie scarf. Um, I kept making mistakes about where to do my increases. I was increasing on the wrong side. I was running out of stitch markers. And I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, Emma, take out the ones at the bottom and put them into the top. Yes, I would do that, but I also have to count how many increases I'm doing. And I know I could write that down, but I'm already writing down when I do the increases to make so it tallies up with how many marks, with how many stitch markers. These are not stitch markers. These are like bobby pins or like slides um, because I ran out of stitch markers. And my friend Brenda was like, Emma, use the um, hair grips. So I did that and it's really working and it helps me visually because I don't know about you, but I find it really hard to read the knit front and back. So like I can't, I can't see them at all in this pattern, which is obviously the intention, but it makes it difficult to know where your last increase was. And normally I'm very good at reading the knit. And so like, I wouldn't normally worry too much about that sort of thing. And this is a deceptively simple looking knit, but really you do actually have to concentrate quite I have to concentrate quite a lot while I'm knitting this, so I can maybe watch TV, but it needs to be kind of in the background and I need to have my pen or my pencil and my um, paper handy so that I can mark off my increases. Um, but yeah, I don't know about you, but I cannot count to eight. Can't do it. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening here. Um, I would like to get some stitch markers in the shop and that would be a good excuse for me to get some for myself. <laughs> um, but this will do in the meantime. So if I like this yarn, after it's blocked and after I wear it, um, it will hopefully be coming to the shop. Probably next year. So this is my last work in progress. I hope to have this finished, I don't know, in the next week maybe. This is the most pressing one, I would say. Um, but yeah, and then it'll be a nice little addition for the winter. So if I can crack one Sophie scarf, then potentially um, I can do a few more in my um, current Hearth DK yarn, which would be really nice. 
in different colors. I really like a red one. I feel like that poppy colored red is really having a moment and I think it would look so cool. I mean, I could even marl one. That would look amazing. So finally on to dream knits before my phone runs out of battery and memory again. <laughs> Um, I've been thinking for some time that I would like to knit something colourful but also something really wearable and I've been searching, searching, searching for patterns um, I had a look at the um, I had a look at various different patterns but in the end I decided my actually my sister-in-law found a really nice looking pattern by someone called Vester by Crea. I think it's a Scandinavian designer. The pattern's not even released yet. It's coming out on the 12th of August. So I think I am going to knit that with some of my mini skein colors. And the look I'm kind of going for is apricot colors, uh, yellows, soft yellows, champagne type colors. And then the base color of that is white. So I'm planning on doing that. I actually had three sewing whips that I finished. I sewed two aprons and a pair of shorts, but I don't have them here to show you. Uh, they're very, very basic and not that, they're not that cool looking. They're more just practical. Um, I think that's my main next. I would like to knit maybe one more jumper for my little girl for this winter and oh yeah i'll show you my swatches this is my new yarn that i swatched i think this was on a 4.5 millimeter needle this is the swatch for my stockholm hat this was the swatch for my trust new and this was the swatch for oops I love this swatch. This was the swatch for uh, my pre pre knit for Albina. Only it's the same yarn but a different colour that I had. And one day I would love to knit something in a moral like this. So I think that's all I have to share today. Before I disappear off here, um, I forgot to tell you about this little sweater pattern that I found. It's called the Camellia Sweater Little by Su Min Kim. I thought it was a really sweet pattern. I thought I could knit it for my little girl. Um, I thought the colours were beautiful and then I realised that she has an adult size version. Um, the size range is not very big um, but I could find my size in it um, and I might knit one for myself possibly. Um, I know the size, size range isn't ideal um, but I do really love that pattern. So I may knit one for myself. I'll have to think about it a little bit longer. And the one that I would like to knit for my little girl will be in some naturally dyed yarn that I bought in France. If you watched my last vlog, you will have seen what I purchased. Um, and the one I knit for myself, I would like it to be in these autumnal colors. The next thing that I forgot to talk about <laughs> is the levity wrap. That is a pattern by, oh, I'm going to put it on the screen, but I thought it would be really nice um, in my Causeway yarn, which will be coming back to the shop in a little while in the Jasmine colorway. It was particularly this photo um, that this person called Knit Pit had taken of her Levitate wrap. I just thought the color of it is so nice, probably totally impractical with a toddler, but I just thought, yeah, that looks really good even more than the original photos. So I'll probably go for something like that. Um, so yeah, I think in my Jasmine colorway in the Causeway yarn possibly, or maybe in another limited edition yarn. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, what what life news do I need to tell you? Um, I'm in the middle of my Willy Mammoth studio renovation. Um, there's a digger coming tomorrow to dig out some drainage and uh, we're in the process of the build there so that's quite intense and why I'm not doing so much dyeing because I'm doing stuff to do with that. It's taking up a lot of mental energy and physical energy. <laughs> um, I'll put in some clips here so you can see what I'm doing. But if you skip back to a few vlogs ago, um, the one that says my big secret or something like that and um, that's all to do with the studio i think i think it's that one 
Um, life stuff, I'm just really enjoying the garden, although I feel like I'm kind of behind in it, but um, I have some lovely cosmos growing this year and they're bringing me a lot of joy and I'm able to bring a lot of, um, like this is the sweet pea, I can bring it in from the garden and have some flowers in the house. Um, for those of you following along with my Sardo journey, um, it's going really well and I'm enjoying it more and more. And the next thing I want to try doing <clears throat> is making some sauerkraut. So I've got cabbage, I've got the big jar, so I'm going to do that maybe today. And <coughs> the tomatoes are finally <clears throat> starting to ripen in the greenhouse. That's really, really nice. And I have some kale grown. That's the first time I've grown kale, so it's going really well. Um, I was a bit scared at the start of the cabbage white butterfly and I had them covered, but I think they're well enough established now that they would recover if the butterfly came and ate them all. Um, and I was away on holidays. You can see it in the previous vlog. And what else? I don't know, but I'm just going to show you me making up the bread and a couple of little extra bits of b-roll here i hope you enjoyed the episode and leave me a comment i do read all the comments i might not respond to them all but i'm trying to get better at that so do leave me a comment because i do read them and um you can tell me what you're working on and um if you've ever used hair grips as stitch markers <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me and I will see you um, in the next one I guess all my details are below if you want to find me in different places and my shop link will be down there too see you later